Today I would like to tell a story of extraordinary journalistic malpractice. This morning, whilst going to university, I was sent a post called Is the GNOME Foundation going bankrupt in one year? It looks that way. Which is one hell of a claim. This video will not only explain what's going on over the GNOME side of things, but it will also cover how so-called Linux journalists can attempt to reframe facts and spin up a toxic narrative. Let's start with the news. Currently, both the GNOME Foundation and the KDE EV are in extremely similar spots. They have received very large amounts of money some years ago, but they are non-profits, meaning that they have to use that money. As a result, both organizations grew their spending with the explicit goal of operating at a deficit, spending more money compared to what they receive. That's, by the way, completely normal. Let's get to some numbers. In 2022, the deficit for GNOME and KD foundations were 296,000 and 100,000 euros respectively, and in 2021 it was 640,000 and just 20,000 for KD, but that was an exception. The challenge that both KD and GNOME are facing right now is, now that we have mostly burned out of a large chunk of money that we received years ago, how can we reduce the deficit, maybe even go back to earning money and preserve as much as possible of the previous operations? Well, the first obvious answer is let's do more fundraising. Kitty has organized a very big fundraising for Plasma 6, for the release of Plasma 6, with the goal of ex uh, extending the number of people who donate to Kitty as Kitty memberships, people who donate every year. We started off with something like, I don't know, 50, maybe 100 members, and now we have 1,020, one sorry, 1,092, I just cannot read numbers today. This directly translates to maybe 120 to 130,000 extra euros of extra income every year, and maybe even more than that. We've also considered hiring a fundraising manager, which could handle this kind of initiatives, initiatives for the future. And GNOME, they did that. They knew they had to either raise more money or cut back on the spending, so they decided to hire somebody that had experience in, well, raising money. And that would be Holly Million. I don't know how it's pronounced, I'm just gonna go with Holly Million. Holly Million joined GNOME just six months ago as executive director. She served as a consultant and executive director as of uh, sorry, many nonprofits. She founded one called Artists United and previously served as executive director of the BioBricks Foundation. Again this, move, uh, again, this move was done by the GNOME Foundation in the wider context of shifting from years of doing deficit, thanks to the previously big donations, to something else. Artists Uni United is no longer operative since 2021, but we can still see an archived copy of the websi website and its social network accounts. It was indeed founded in 2017 by Holly, and just next year she was able to raise around 20k at the very beginning of a fundraising campaign that had a $50,000 uh, $50, goal. We can see that um, well, they, oh, sorry, you can see all the activities and heavens organized by them. So yeah, they just, you know, exist. Biobricks, the other company she's been ex executive director of, also existed, and it seems like she has done further work in the fundraising world. This quote is from the bio, bio page in the Biobricks website. Today, there are so many difficult words to pronounce. In, 20, in 1997, she secured funding for her Academy Award-winning film, A Story of Healing, and today she continues to raise money for an eclectic mix of independent films. As a director, Million created Changing Rooms, a dramatic film that had its television debut on P uh, PBS in 2005. 
She was the producer and director of a bunch of other admittedly small films and she has a Master of Arts from Stanford University and a Bachelor of Arts uh, from Harvard University. It's pretty clear that she has fun experience with fundraising and managing non-profit organizations. She, however, does not have a knowledge of Linux, Linux or GNOME that we know of. I think the main focus of the GNOME hiring team was to find someone with great experience in fundraising and managing non-profits and that was valued more than knowing what GNOME does. And honestly, I can fully understand that decision. And we finally get to two days ago when the GNOME board president, Robert McQueen, published an update from the board covering the finances, strategy and future of the board organizations and so on. This contains many technical points, such as the decision to elect two more uh, people to the board in order to have nine people instead of seven volunteers, by the way, board members are not paid. And what raised most concern was the financial situation. McQueen shared that the GNOME Foundation has an internal policy that specifies a minimum amount of money to be kept in GNOME's bank account at all times. The idea is that if anything happens, if income goes down, we still have at least some money to pay for um, at least a year. After three years of deficit from the foundation, they have hit that minimum amount, meaning that from now on, they won't be able to spend any more money compared to what they earn. As a result, Holly has prepared a brick even budget to be approved from the board in October. That budget will dictate the spending from the next fiscal year and, again, it's break-even, so that the GNOME Foundation keeps above, or a little bit below that minimum amount of, bon of money in the bank. We can only speculate how much that minimum amount is. We do know that towards the end of 2022, the GNOME project declared to the IRS to have $854,000 in savings and assuming that they've been spending money at the same rate as 2022, they should now have more than 400,000 uh, euros or dollars. There's also $42,000 in receivables that should be bring that total up to almost half a million. This is purely an estimate and the actual number might be likely higher since McQueen talked about the foundation already being more careful with spending. Even if that number was correct, however, we shouldn't be particularly surprised or or worried, as the GNOME Foundation has had this kind of money in the bank before, with even higher expenses and incomes compared to today. In 2011, a bit of time ago, they had roughly $350,000 in the bank. Meanwhile, Holly has been preparing a variety of fundraising activities that will be launched in the coming months. There will be a development fund to allow people to donate towards GNOME development. There's professional grant writers work, working to apply to government and private funding opportunities, further work with corporate spon sponsors, and so on. The goal here is to make sure that GNOME has to get as little as possible from what they are currently doing. They have to break even in the next budget, so the more money they have, the more they can keep up whatever they were doing before. GNOME did recently receive one million dollar euros grant from the Tech Sovereign Fund, but that came with a contract contract on how to exactly spend that money and it's going to happen all in this fiscal year so it won't have a significant impact on GNOME finances at all. We can see it as a bit of an extra that allowed to hire people during this year to work on accessibility and more. Most importantly though GNOME is not in any financial danger, there is no fear that it's going to go bankrupt, there is a clear pl plan ahead with within the board, there's still money in the bank accounts, there's still the usual income, they know this, this was going to happen and that's why they hired somebody experienced in this kind of things. This does not mean that we can or should stop caring or stop asking the KD Foundation about more details on the financial, financial situation. It's still something which requires some careful handling, but no, the GNOME Foundation is not going to bankrupt in a year. Neither is KD, which is in a similar, you know, they have similar finances, I think, roughly. 
And that was the news. It was not particularly exciting, was it? But now we get to the fun part, because, come on, you just have to let me have some fun. I promised I would talk about journalistic malpractice, so let's do it. But first, a word from our sponsors, which is nobody. Or almost, almost. So, I'm doing this live stream and this recording using using that capture card, which was very kindly sent me from Slimbook. I actually tweeted it that I was wanted to buy it, and they sent it for free. And it's a 4K capture card, which means that I could record 4K. Right now, I prefer to do full HD 60 FPS, but it does 4K, so it's pretty cool. Now, if you see the video as bad, that's on me. I kind of messed up the whole thing, but. About that, you can also donate to me to make sure that I spend more time and money in infrastructure because believe me, there's a lot of lights and teleprompter and recording stuff and monitors and cables and well, um, this video does not need to be edited, but it needs to be researched and that takes quite a lot of time. So if you could donate something, you've got links in the sidebar over there as soon as it appears back, which is shortly because let's get back to the topic. Firstly, this Yes, I was one slide behind. This joke of a journalist begins the article by saying that the Gnome Foundation has been unusually silent about their operations, not publishing any public reports for closing in on two years now. Which sounds bad. Why has Gnome stopped telling us about their financial situation? Well, it's bullshit. How things work in the non-profit world, and I'm talking about GNOME, but I'm also talking about KE, is that you can spend some money during a certain year, and then you work on a full report of everything that happened during that year, and you publish it. Usually, it takes quite a bit of time for the promotional team to put it together, and KDEV takes around six months, thus publishing it around July. And the GNOME Foundation decides to always publish the, those there's during the annual conference GUADEC that also happens in July. This means that the data about 2022 expenditure was published in July 2023, and the data about 2023 will be published in, in July 2024. This is completely normal. It's what KDE does, it's what GNOME does, it's always been like that since 2016. Before that they had another weird thing, but that was weird. <laughs> There's literally nothing weird going on. We just have to wait three more months and then we'll get last year's data. Then this guy summarizes the whole discussion about hitting the minimum amount of money in the bank in this simple statement. GNOME has run out of money. Which is bullshit. <laughs> running out of money means running out of money. Whereas, we can still easily estimate the GNOME Foundation to still have around half a million euros in their savings. The commentary about this whole thing is so high level that uh, after presenting the 2021 expenditure numbers, he says, notice how the expenses far exceed the revenue? Not good. Boy howdy, it is deep in the negative. Sure, <laughs> let's just forget about the fact that nonprofits have a legal requirement to actively spend their revenue and they are required to do deficit if they have too much money. Just let's forget about that. But then, still in the same article, he tries to estimate the current reserve reserves of GNOME through IRS reports. However, it completely leaves out the amount of money that GNOME has in non-interest bearing accounts and only focuses on the savings in cash investments. The distinction is there because saving accounts are still interest bearing accounts, meaning that the GNOME Foundation is rightfully earning interest on that money. However, they also have 89,000 euros in dollars in non-interest bearing accounts, such as their checking account. And this is still not counting the $42,000 uh, that GNOME has in total accounts receivable, which is the outstanding in invoices that the GNOME Foundation expects to be paid. Due to all of these mistakes and oversights, this Linux journalist comes up with a total estimate savings of 296,000 um, euros or dollars, I don't know, which is way too low of an estimate. And finally, it justifies the title of his amateur blog post. 
if the numbers it gave were correct, and they aren't, and if the GNOME Foundation were to keep spending the money at the same rate of 2022, and they won't, then they would run out of money completely in April 2025, completely disregarding the fact that Holly has prepared a break-even budget. But of course, he also starts attacking Holly. He says that her only previous job was professional shaman, completely disregarding all of her actual work experience that I've outlined earlier, er, earlier on. He says that Gnome is in total silence about future plans, even though McQueen's own post talks about the changes in budget and the new fundraising events. And finally, all of this is blamed on politics by showcasing one Twitter post from the GNOME vice president that simply said that inclusion, sustainability and diversity were the focus of one discussion with Oli. I don't even know what to say. The rest of the article is rumblings, attacks on the Linux Foundation and further fear, uncertainty and disorder. Now, according to McQueen, millions Sorry, Million has worked on a detailed five-year strategy plan that will be shared by the foundation over the coming weeks. This is great news and I'm really looking forward to hearing it. Till then, this is Nikolov's Linux and I still hate people who intentionally present made-up facts and numbers. See you soon.